In this module, we look at race and ethnicity from an anthropological perspective. The American Anthropological Association refuses to define race as a biological or genetic category. Their statement on race addresses the question as follows. Historical research has shown that the idea of race has always carried more meanings than mere physical differences. Indeed, physical variations in the human species have no meaning except the social ones that humans put on them. Today, scholars in many fields argue that race, as it is understood in the United States of America, was a social mechanism invented during the 18th century to refer to those populations brought together in colonial America. The English and other settlers, the conquered Indian peoples, and those peoples of Africa brought in to provide slave labor. Subsequently, race evolved as a worldview, a body of prejudgments that distorts our ideas about human differences and group behavior. The racial worldview was invented to assign some groups to perpetual low status, while others were permitted access to privilege, power, and wealth. The tragedy in the United States has been that the policies and practices stemming from this worldview succeeded all too well in constructing unequal populations among Europeans, Native Americans, and peoples of African descent. Given what we know about the capacity of normal humans to achieve and function within any culture, we conclude that present-day inequalities between so-called racial groups are not consequences of their biological inheritance, but products of historical and contemporary social, economic, educational, and political circumstances. You can see the entire statement on the American Anthropological Association website. I begin with these passages here to suggest that race is a highly problematic concept, but that it has been used with all too real effect on human beings. So by the end of this module, you should be able to demonstrate the following learning outcomes. Explain and illustrate the following concepts from an anthropological perspective, race, ethnicity, phenotype, hypodescent, double consciousness, structural racism, color, color blindness, ascribed identities, dominant cultural forms, norms rather. Explain race and ethnicity as dynamic, dynamic processes situated in history, context, and individual and group agency in the relationship between power and inequality within and among social groups. Identify and discuss how diverse groups in the United States experience their history, identities, values, and economic practices. We'll begin with a number of film clips that focus primarily on race and racism in U.S. culture. Spike Lee's 1989 film, Do the Right Thing, explores racial tension and bigotry in Brooklyn's Bedford-Stuyvesant neighborhood. Key and Peele's substitute teacher hilariously subverts racial hierarchies when an African-American substitute teacher berates suburban white students for misunderstanding the correct pronunciation of their own names. A girl like me looks at some of the pressures African-American girls and women face regarding skin tone and hair. The last two films are short op-docs from a New York Times Conversation on Race series. The first is titled, A Conversation with My Black Son, and the second is, A Conversation with White People on Race. In the first, mostly African-American parents speak about their concerns for their sons in a society where black males are all too often targeted. In the second, white people speak about how uneasy they find talking about race in the first place. After you view these clips, I'll ask you to participate in a discussion with your colleagues. There's only one presentation in the module on race and ethnicity. This is followed by some materials on ethnicity that I'd like you to read and then these are in turn followed by a quiz. In addition to my lecture notes on ethnicity, 
There are four readings in this module. The first, The Color of Justice, is by legal scholar Michelle Alexander. She argues that the war on drugs has led to the mass incarceration of African American males, particularly nonviolent drug offenders. The second, by Charles Gallagher, is called Color Blind Privilege. Gallagher examines the significance of the denial of race in contemporary America. The third is an excerpt from Carol Stack's 1974 ethnography, All Our Kin. Stack's fieldwork focused on the importance of kinship, both biological and fictional, as well as swapping as a means of organizing social life and, and keeping body and soul together in conditions of deprivation. And finally, I want you to begin Renegade Dreams, Lawrence Ralph's powerful ethnography on violence, injury, and dreaming on the west side of Chicago. You'll need to have purchased or otherwise obtained the book. These readings will be followed by study questions in Canvas. Finally, at the end of this module, your ethnographic observation on diversity is due in Canvas. I look forward to reading these. I've learned a lot from insightful, imaginative student writing over the years and look forward to reading what you are able to come up with. Keep in mind that you'll also need to use some of our course concepts to analyze your observation. In Module 5, we'll turn to class or socioeconomic status.